New to Microsoft Word 2007 are what are called building blocks. They're a combination of graphics and or text that you select and save as a block of information to be inserted later into other documents. So for example here, you can see I've got my building block that includes the clip art letter P, uh, the word art Phil Collins, and some text. In other words, this uh, building block that I'm about to save here, I'd like to insert it in my Phil Collins newsletters or quarterly newsletters of Phil Collins. And I want it as a header up at the top. I want to be able to click and insert it at one time. I don't want to have to recreate all this later. So once I create it, I can go ahead and click and drag to select it. Everything that I select is going to be part of the building block. So if I wanted some space after I insert my building block, it's probably best to have some hard returns. In fact, include those as part of the building block. So I'll hit Control A and it will select these blank lines or these hard returns, the last one right here. So when I insert it into my newsletter that has other text or documents, it's not right underneath the London, um, England address. It actually has some spacing here, at least up to this point here. So now that I have it all selected, I want to save it. To save it, we're going to click on the Insert tab. I know that's weird because the only way you can save it is from the Insert tab, going to the text group and clicking on the Quick Parts button and you can see you got your building blocks after you save them you can uh, delete them um, organize them rename them but first we want to be able to save them now why is a building block underneath the quick parts button what does quick parts have anything to do with building blocks building blocks are parts that you can quickly insert into a document at least that's my story and I'm sticking with it so I'm going to go ahead and click save selection to quick parts gallery and that's going to do two things first of all it's going to save whatever I have selected down below and secondly it's going to add it to the quick part gallery. The gallery is nothing more than if you, like for example, if you go to an art exhibit, you have pictures on the wall, that's a gallery. It actually saves it as a thumbnail preview that you can view later on. When I click on the quick parts button, it'll be somewhere up at the top. Let me show you. Let me click on save, and it gives me the option to give it a name. In Microsoft Word, if you haven't noticed already, sometimes when you click on some of these buttons up at the top, like auto shapes, it gives you a gallery of shapes to choose from. That's what a gallery is, to emphasize my point. The Quick Parts Gallery is going to be, when I click on Quick Parts, it'll be, again, a picture of what I'm about to insert, or I can change that. If you watched other training videos, you do have, you can insert headers and footers. If you want to have this in the header and footer gallery, of course, you could do that, or even as tables. When you're inserting table and you say, look, I'd like this uh, to be as a table. It doesn't make sense to do it, but nonetheless, you can do it. Basically, the idea being is that you can create your own little thumbnail previews, and mine's going to be listed in the Quick Parts Gallery you can categorize your building blocks and your categories are tied actually to each gallery so if I go ahead and I say I'd like to save it in the general category that's fine but if I come down here and I say I want to create a new category and say these are the PC headers because maybe I want to create four or five or six different headers to alternate uh, th throughout the next couple of years I can click OK I haven't saved it yet I haven't clicked OK but I want you to know that if I do click OK and I come back later and I change my gallery and I say well I want to save this maybe as custom one then know that your categories again are tied to your galleries and it's not going to be listed here your PC headers you have to create a new category for each gallery so again I'm gonna come back here and go to my quick parts gallery and then say that create a new category and call it my PC headers and then click OK you can type in any description you want and then that's it just go ahead and click OK and it's already done Let's go ahead and take it for a test drive. I'm going to click on the Office logo button up at the top here uh, for Word and then go to a recent document, Collins, and bring him up. So let's pretend this is my quarterly newsletter and I want to insert that block of information up at the top. So I'm going to come up to the Insert tab just like as if you're going to save a building block. Yes, you can also insert here. Come over to the Quick Parts and there it is. There's my gallery. Well, I can't see it. I mean, the P is pushing it down. It's kind of scrunched up just a bit. And actually, that's what it's going to look like when I insert it here. So I may want to think about going back and uh, changing my gallery, at least recreating one and overriding this one and saving it if it doesn't look good here. In fact, when I click on it, you can see the letter P is in the upper left-hand corner and Phil Collins is underneath it. So you want to keep in mind when you save your galleries, um, depending on the documents you're inserting them into or what you're creating them from, how that's going to affect uh, what actually comes in and what it looks like. So, but that looks pretty good, and I got my hard returns just like I wanted, right? Now, after a while, when you start creating quite a few of these um, building blocks, you may not want to have them list as, as a gallery like you do here, either in the quick parts or as a header or maybe as a table when you click on to see the gallery there and you may want to actually delete a few so to change them just come to the quick parts here and go to the building blocks organizer I'll have a listing of all the building blocks that you have including 
Uh, gosh, it looks like almost a hundred of Microsoft's uh, pre-built building blocks. So to find it, you can go by name. It'll sort A to Z or by gallery or category if you know the category you want to look in. But I'm going to go by name and scroll all the way down to the P's and look for Phil Collins here and select him. And there he is. Then I can either delete them or I can insert them again or I can edit the properties and make changes here. In fact, there's more than one way to do this. I'm going to close out, click on Quick Parts. If he's already up in the gallery here, just when in doubt, right click. And you can either edit the properties just right here if you want to rename them or switch them to a different gallery. Or click Cancel and go to Quick Parts again and right click and go to Organize and Delete. You can see they both have that green little book here. The difference between the two, and there isn't any except when I click on it, this. It takes me right to the building block, has it highlighted so I don't have to scroll through to find Phil Collins. Now if I want to remove them from the gallery but still have it as a building block, I can go ahead and click Edit Properties and then instead of Quick Parts, let me do something custom because I don't want it like in tables or anything like that. When I click on the table button, I don't want it showing there. So let me do Custom One. Let me create a new category for the Custom One and call it and then click OK. And then click OK again. Now, when it means to redefine the building block, that just means that you want to update it or overwrite what you have here with your latest change. I'm going to go ahead and click Yes. It's changed, so when I close out and I come up to the Quick Parts, it's no longer in the gallery. If I want to insert it, it's going to be found as near as I can tell because I don't know of any custom buttons up here. I have to go to the Building Blocks Organizer and then and I can sort it by name or by gallery and I can scroll down here. There's, there's my custom one here and then just click on insert and uh, it inserts it again twice. But I'm going to hit undo and like I said if I open up a new document office to a new blank document double click on that any other documents I can insert there as well quick parts to building blocks let's sort it by gallery again because that seems to be the easiest custom and insert now notice how I, when I insert it into this document versus this document it's off you want to keep that in mind because this document it may have some issues with some predefined formatting margins, tabs, whatever I'm inserting into. In any case, I'm going to come back here and close out of this document, go back to my Collins document. Now that you know how to create your own building blocks, let's go ahead and uh, insert a couple of Microsoft's pre-built building blocks because if you want, you can look at theirs, insert them, update them and change them and save them as your own so half the work's done. Plus, since the imagination's the limit, we can get some ideas from some of Microsoft's uh, pre-built building blocks. Before I do that, I'm going to scroll down in, in here. Well, I'll be somewhere in the text because I know they have a building block Microsoft does that will insert a text box over to the right-hand side of this. And maybe I could have in this text box like uh, a free drawing or win a free lunch with Phil. So I want to click wherever I want to put or insert my building block here and then come up to the insert tab go to quick parts to building blocks and of course like I said if you have some time you can come through here and click on each building block and look over to the right hand side and uh, see if that's something that you're interested in in any case I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom here and choose the puzzle sidebar you can see it gives me a gray text box and inside that's a burgundy with some text so that'll be nice to have a kind of a side note here of those who want to enter a free drawing to have lunch with Phil I'm going to go ahead and click on insert and that's pretty cool. It pushes the text over to the left hand side and let me scroll up to the top here to see what it looks like and scroll down to the bottom. That's not too bad. The text is there. Just go ahead and start typing and as you begin to type you'll see that it starts scrolling so if I hit enter a couple of times I can continue to type. Well let's try another, one more predefined building block uh, created by Microsoft. I'm going to click out here in the text and I'm going to look at some page numbers. Click on insert, quick parts to building blocks you can see they got some page numbers here. When you select on them, they have uh, the name of it, Accent Bar. In fact, I know of a page number. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the L's, and I think they have a large colored one, and it looks like in the lower left-hand corner. I'm going to go ahead and click on Insert and see what happens. Hey, look at that. It automatically put me in the footer of the second page and inserted the page number. It's large, of course, and it looks like it's blue. In fact, if I scroll up, there should be a page number at the bottom of page 1 and the bottom of page 3. Fantastic. I'll go ahead and close out of this. Go back up to page 2. And like I said before, if you come in here and you insert pre-built building block by Microsoft and you type some text and it's something that you want and save as a new building block, for example, 
Um, let me come up here to the format and make a few more changes to this uh, text box that I've selected, this building block. I'm going to come to the styles and let's choose something. Ooh, uh, that's not too bad. A shade of blue. Once I've made all the changes, I can save this as a building block. Of course, it's under the insert quick parts to make sure, of course, you have it selected. If I don't have something selected, this will be faded. I won't be able to save my selection. Go ahead and click on save. I'm going to type in just puzzle here and then click OK. If I want to make some additional changes to this, I don't have to delete what I just saved. I can just go ahead and update it. So for example, I'll come up in here and I'll say, look, I didn't want blue. I want maybe something, well, that closely resembles the color within this inner text box. And then all I have to do is come back to the Insert tab, Quick Parts, and there it is, Puzzle. If I want to go ahead and overwrite this, all I have to do is remember the name, Puzzle and just save it as puzzle. So I can come down in here, of course, make sure that I selected everything that I want to include in my building block. So by default, you can see that handle there. So it looks like it's selected um, the text box. If I click out and I don't have anything selected, and then I go to quick parts. See, it doesn't allow me to uh, save the selection because I have nothing selected. So I'm going to come back here, click on the border. So it has the text box, everything in it selected, and then go to quick parts, go to save, and then I'm going to type in puzzle. And then when I click OK, I mean, look, you already have something already named Puzzle. Do you want to redefine it and update it with the building block that you're currently saving? Click Yes. Because when I come back and I click on Quick Parts, it's no longer blue. It's now updated my Puzzle building block to uh, that nice little shade of pink. And of course, like I said, if you need to get rid of a building block, you can click on Quick Parts, go to your building block organizer, and then go ahead and scroll down to find it, in this case, fill columns and you can delete them from your building blocks. Also in previous versions of Word you could insert fields within your document for example uh, to find it in Microsoft uh, Word 2007 come to the insert tab go to the quick parts and there's your field options. Click on insert field and for example I want to insert a date that always updates every time I open up the document so for the categories I'll select date and time and then come down in here and select a date and then come over here to the type of date format that I'd like, January 18, 2008, and click OK. And automatically, you, when you hover over it, you can see it starts shading. I didn't even select it, it just started shading automatically. When you click on it, you can see it's a dynamic field. A dynamic field just means it's something that's changing, constantly changing. And in this case, um, there's no point in clicking the update or hitting F9 on your keyboard because when you close out of the document and you open it back up, let's say on January 19th, it's going to say January 19th because it's a dynamic field. And if you want to move this around, you can drag it by its three little ellipses here. And you can see you can move that date around up or down. And you can also edit the font within here as well by clicking and dragging, selecting it, and coming to your um, home tab, or just when in doubt, right click and changing the font here as well. And if you need to make any changes to it, a uh, different format, you can always when in doubt right click and go to edit the field and of course change it there into a different format as well. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.